I wanted to believe in this redemption arc so bad. I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous about this. I don't think I've ever been nervous to start a book before. I think maybe because my expectations are so high and I literally have no idea what I'm getting into here. Other than a lifetime of obsession and servitude to the Cosmere. The dedication in this book is for Emily, who is too patient, too kindly, and too wonderful for words, but I try anyway. Stop. We're just going to have a moment for how adorable that is. And then I'm going to stop procrastinating because that's what I'm doing. Okay, I just got through the prologue and it has been a long time since I read a book of this magnitude. I can already tell that this is the type of book that you would want to reread. With books like this, the first read through is just kind of to get the general feel of the story and to fall in love with the characters and then you go back through it again and you really start to understand the finer points of what the author is doing throughout the story. You know you are like wide scope epic fantasy when you start on the aftermath of a battlefield because The first probably 50 pages were a little hard for me to keep up with just because it shifts time periods and characters so much, but this definitely has a Brandon Sanderson feel to it, which kind of amazes me that he's able to do all these different genres, but you can still tell it's Brandon Sanderson. He is giving us tons of really cool, minute details about you know, traditions and fashion and economy and military. I love Kaladin. Yes, yes you do like Kaladin. Shalon is the other character that I've spent the most time with at this point and I can tell that she is going to be a very relatable character. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of where Shalon's tenacity gets her. Kaladin is really the character that I'm most interested in and I'm really curious to see what happens with him. I tend to gravitate towards military fantasy anyway, so I'm not really surprised that I'm kind of leaning more toward his character. Okay, wait. Shalon is going to steal Jasna's like, gemstone bracelet. <laughs> uh, it's Jasna, not Jasna. Just I have a question about that. If Jasna is actually, like, the most powerful woman on the continent, according to Brandon Sanderson's own words, and Shalon's brilliant plan is to steal this thing, replace it with one that doesn't work, go back to her house, start using it, and expect that Jasna is like not going to hear that, oh, my gemstone bracelet, this Fabriel was stolen, and this girl that was trying to be my apprentice, her family is now randomly able to do all this soul casting stuff. Okay. Today while reading, I met another Brandon Sanderson fan. I named him Jorgen. Hey guys, it's the next day. I am about 250 pages into Way of Kings. I love, I think it's pronounced Zeth, um, who's the assassin from the very beginning of the book. I'm really intrigued by him, and his situation, honestly, is so tragic and awful. You know that you're invested in a book when you're reading and you literally stop and you're like, give me that oath stone. Cal and Syl, 
I'm really liking the dynamic between the two of them. I love the difference between Elokar and Jasna, the royal siblings. They're really intriguing to me because I love how much of a contrast they are to each other. I would say honestly that Shallan is probably the one I'm least invested in at this point. I'm a huge fan of Kaladin. He's, you know, conflicted and broody, kind of has an honor complex. The magic system in this is in really fascinating, and I'm not surprised by that at all because Brandon Sanderson is well known for his incredibly uh, inventive magic systems, and this is proving to be no different. The shard blades, can we just talk about that for a minute? Like, you know, when I was first reading this, I was expecting the shard blades to actually just be normal swords once they appeared, but the fact that they don't actually cut through living flesh, like it's it just deadens everything, that's brilliant. And that's a that's a twist that I don't think I I don't know. I've I've not read anything like that in military fantasy before. Sometimes when you read fantasy books, the interludes are like, they kind of feel disjointed and they kind of take you out of the main story. But with this, I feel like these are really interesting and I love that they tie in with characters we already know. So it makes them a little bit less um, jarring, I guess. That's where I'm at, I'm gonna keep going. Hey guys, it's a couple days later and I have been not vlogging as much as I should be because I've been really engrossed in this book. But look, I'm over halfway. I'm so excited. I don't even know how to vlog this. Like I had this great idea that it would be super cool to vlog this and talk about everything as I was going through it. And there's so much. If you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. There's so much. I'm noticing a lot of the symbols that we're using, um, especially in the chapter headings of things, I've noticed, like, this was one that I noticed right away on chapter 35. Look at the way that, like, arc and those spears are. That totally looks like one of the metal symbols from Mistborn. Also, the way Zeth, who, by the way, I still am in love with, he is, uh, he's a cool character. I really like him. Um, Really looking forward now that he is in the clutches of somebody who's going to really make him do some damage. Uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. I know all of this is tied together, but I don't know exactly how yet. And I think when Sanderson weaves everything together at the end, I'm gonna be like, what? Paladin, okay, there's so many things. One of the things that I am having a hard time with is I tend to love military fantasy. Kaladin and Dalinar's arcs are really intriguing to me. I really love their characters and their subcast and there's the Motley Crue effect with Kaladin and Bridge Four, which I love. The thing that I'm having a hard time with, and I think this is honestly a personal preference, Shallan, is the character I don't care about, ironically enough, because she's probably the one I should relate to more. She's bookended by these two active military characters. And, you know, obviously Kaladin more than Dalinar, but there's still a lot of action sequences with them. And then we go to Shallan, who is literally like sitting in alcoves and reading books and talking about philosophy for three pages. And there are some really amazing philosophical gems in those conversations, so I do appreciate that. It just feels so slow. Part of it is because we don't know as much about her backstory as we know about Dalinar and Kaladin and Zeth and a lot of these other characters. We've been allowed in to those a little bit more. I honestly am more interested in Yasna her mentor, who I discovered I was pronouncing her name wrong, apparently it's Yasna, when her sections show up that I actually kind of go, ugh, <laughs> a little bit, which I feel horrible about. I think that's a preference thing because I know for a lot of people that don't uh, like as much like constant action scenes, I'm sure that it's a nice break in between 
all of the military stuff. So I, I think for me, that's like a total personal preference thing. I would be willing to bet there's a lot of people with an opposite opinion to me on this. I'm really loving Kaladin's story arc. We're in a part now where I don't know what's going to happen. Kaladin was just put out in the high storm and they were expecting him to die and he didn't. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. Now what? Now what? At some point, all of these characters are gonna have to mingle. Like, at some point, they're gonna have to meet each other, and I am so psyched for that happening. It's gonna be crazy. I would love to see Shallan meet uh, Renarin, who is Dalinar's younger son. Um, I know that might be a weird thing and they probably won't end up together, but they're they're both adorable and I, I definitely would put those two together. I'm actually really invested in Renarin because he's the underdog, you know? He's got an older brother who's this really glory-filled knight with a shard blade and he's just second fiddle. I really care about him. I want him to have a moment somewhere in this book and I'm sure he will because Sanderson doesn't put a character in a book for no reason. Hi guys, so I am getting some reading time in this morning. I'm on page 566. Shallan just saw Yasna um, take out the four reprobates in the alley. I love the way that Brandon Sanderson handles like deep philosophical questions in his books. Shallan um, really got angry and then she finally stole the soul caster from Yasna and now she's freaking out because every time she turns around she's convinced that Yasna is going to find out. One of the things that really was relatable to me with Shallan finally was when she is drawing all of these pictures of what happened in the alleyway with Yasna and she's trying to cope with the trauma of that by throwing herself into her art form, which is something that I can relate to. And I think that is such a, people do that all the time. People are constantly um, healing from and expressing their feelings from all sorts of life experiences in their art. As you can see, I'm making a serious dent. I'm getting very close to the end of the book. I'm at the point where I'm like really invested in how he's gonna do it, but I still am fairly clueless. And I don't really like to make predictions about the end of books because I, I'd rather just read it and find out. I want more Renarin. I would really like an interlude just from Renarin's perspective because I really like his character and I feel like he's getting overshadowed by Adolin, which makes sense. But at the same time, I really want to know more about him because I feel like he's super intelligent and nobody asks for his opinion nearly as much as they should. Now Yasna knows that Shallan t tried to steal her soul caster and she's sending her away, so I have no idea how that's going to work. And honestly, if Shallan just kind of like goes back to her home and separates from Yasna, I'm going to be kind of disappointed. I'm not going to lie. Like that feels like a very anticlimactic ending. I'm hoping, I know Sanderson, so I'm hoping that there's going to be some crazy thing that happens with Shallan before she can go back to her home. I really like Adolin's character. I really do. He, he strikes me as kind of the bravado playboy-esque character, but at the same time, I do still really care because he cares so much about his father and about what's happening, and he is trying to do the right thing even though he's got that definite firstborn syndrome going on. So, Anyways, that's where I'm at. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. It's gonna get crazy. I'm really appreciating the philosophies that Sanderson is introducing here about the questions of equality and how different caste systems are kind of run and created and why. I have some things to say. Okay, we are starting to really get moving on the end of this book. And oh my gosh, there are some things. There's a there's a line on page 748 where Kaladin is described by one of his bridgemen. You're a fool and an instigator. 
but you're an honest one. And I felt like that line just embodied so much of Kaladin. Also, there's these little italicized quotes at the beginning of every chapter, and at first I could not figure out what on earth these had to do with anything. And this one on chapter 54, which is starting a chapter of Dalinar's perspective, says, the burdens of nine become mine. Why must I carry the madness of them all? Oh, almighty, release me. I think that there have been people having these uh, crazy, mad visions for a very long time, and maybe they just are dragged all the way through madness all the way to their death, I don't know, but I just thought it was interesting that that particular quote was at the beginning of a Dalinar chapter, so now I'm really starting to ask questions. Also, Sadius is going up there and Dalinar thinks that he's going to expose him and basically say that it's his fault that the king had this assassination attempt on him, and all this time the visions have been telling Dalinar to trust Sadius, and we knew, like, even though Sadius was supposedly sketchy, I, I've known the whole time, like, I don't think so. I think it's gonna be okay. And that comment did not age well. So then Sadius shocks everyone except me um, by basically exonerating Dalinar. They, these two guys, the most powerful high princes of Alethkar, finally finally join forces and they're actually going to work together and I'm so excited because it's a redemption arc and I love it. I'm really excited to see where this alliance takes the story and it's about time. So that's all I wanted to say. I'm going to keep reading because I literally can't put this down now. And this is the part where Tori realized that the redemption arc wasn't actually a redemption arc. Brandon Sanderson, don't you mess with me like this. I'm not okay. Brandon Sanderson is being a sadist with my emotions and I do not like it, but I also love it a little bit, but I really don't like it. I wanted to believe in this redemption arc so bad. Sadius just totally backstabbed Dalinar and I am not okay. I cannot wait for the Dalinar Kaladin Alliance. I cannot wait for that. It is going to be the most rewarding thing ever. So it better happen. I was having a really hard time because I'm like, where are the villains? I know that Sanderson's just kind of weaving them in here. And Sadius, like, I didn't trust him at the beginning, but then I was like, you know what? What a cool redemption arc. How awesome that these two men who like used to be friends and then weren't, were actually like coming together. You don't do Dalinar like that. You just don't. I need to keep reading because at this point, I'm a little concerned that I'm not going to survive the end of this book. And I have to know that Kaladin gets over himself and joins forces with Dalinar and saves everyone. Dalinar is officially flipping awesome. He just traded his shard blade for all of the bridgemen to the guy that just tried to backstab him and leave him for dead. I just stopped at the part where, like the last sentence I read literally said that Dalinar marched forward and kicked Elokar in the chest and sent him flying backwards. And I'm like, about freaking time. Somebody did something around here. There's like 50 pages left and I'm just, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stop. I wasn't gonna start the second book. I wasn't gonna do it. I was gonna read something else in between. I don't know if I can do that now. Hi guys, this is my last installment for my reading vlog of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I finished the book last night. That last 150 pages was crazy. I have started Words of Radiance. I'm trying to decide if I should do another reading vlog and do this one too because I'm literally very invested in these characters now. Overall, this book, I can see why everybody has been trying to get me to read this for years. I'm, I'm constantly in awe of Brandon Sanderson's ability to create, honestly. Like, it kind of comes down to that. It's an amazing book. I really enjoyed quite a lot of the characters. Yasna, I really like. Adolin, Renarin, Dalinar, Kaladin, I love. 
totally did not see Tara Vangian being a villain. Honestly, that was one of the things that really impressed me about this, is that throughout the entire book, I wasn't really sure where anybody was at, and I didn't really know. It wasn't like a clear hero villain from the beginning. My belief and optimism in the alliance between Dalinar and Sadius, honestly, I feel like was more hopeful optimism than actually believing that Sadius was a good guy. I am so ready to read book two and see Sadius get his comeuppance because he deserves it and I can't. Uh, I'm so mad about it. This was an amazing experience. I am diving right into book two and thank you. If you watched this whole thing, kudos. I would love to know if you've read this book. As spoiler free as possible, what you think? Who's your favorite character? What part really, really grabbed you? At what point in the story did you really feel like you were invested in these characters and really in love with the story? Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.